Hello. Welcome to Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I now have a new website specifically for this podcast. And I can't remember the name of it. I think it's sleep. It's terrible, isn't it? Sleephypnosisdaily.com So, um, I should check out the exact name of the website. I just spent all weekend working on them. I've got three new websites. So, it's basically, it's a place where you can go and the podcast is there. It's the podcast. Uh, in a website so every new episode latest episode is there to just stream to play of course I know it, a lot of people uh, prefer to use you know your own preferable podcast hosts like Spotify Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts Stitcher etc but that's this is just another alternative if um it, sometimes it makes things easier so it's there you won't get um pretty much anything else on that website but just the podcast that one this one podcast which will just always have the most updated versions of the recordings plus all the other ones you can you know scan down for so that's enough of that um Today, just let you know I got the window open, so there might be a few um, background sounds, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be talking to your unconscious mind only. So right now, I'm talking to you, your conscious mind, you know, the part of you that's just aware of what's going on and aware of how you feel, aware of what you can hear. Aware of what you can see, you know, just your conscious mind, just as you are now. I'm going to talk to your unconscious mind. Now, some people describe the conscious mind, subconscious mind, and an unconscious mind. They say conscious mind is, you know, now what you what you can experience right now. Subconscious mind. Uh, someone asks you a question. Um, and you have to search for the answer, but it's in pretty much an instant search. So someone might say to you, what's the colour of your front door? See, you might not have it instantly. It's there, but it's just not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about other things. Um, does that make sense? Have you got any friends that wear hats? You know, people that wear hats all the time. Oh, oh okay. But it's obvious when you're like, well, yeah, Bob, he's always got a hat on. But you have to search, for, you know, this is like a quick search. That would be kind of classed as the subconscious mind, um, where you've got stuff that's very easily accessible. You could think about it as being, if you have a laptop, then the subconscious mind would be the, I guess the the hard drive. You know the the memory. It would be in there. So you just like a little quick search, very easily, instantly accessible. But yeah, you know, it might take sometimes. It might take a couple of seconds to kind of, oh yeah, yeah. When's the last time you went and ordered a pizza? Now, that might not be easily accessible if you haven't ordered a pizza for a long time. So that could be either in your subconscious or in your unconscious mind. When we look, when people explain it this way, so you might have to look into your unconscious mind because it might not have been for three years. And in fact, you might not be able to get hold of it, that information. 
it might be one of those things where you start thinking about it and then you leave it and then five hours later it pops into your head oh yeah it was New Year's Eve uh, New Year's Eve four years ago because that was my friend's leaving do because he was going to go to Thailand oh yeah we had pizza see it could be that kind of similar sort of thing with the unconscious mind I like to think of it as uh, like an, a library where you order something Sometimes you can access something quickly. Sometimes you have to order it. You can't find it. You're searching with your own kind of brain, you know, like in your unconscious mind. But you start the search. And then if you leave it, the librarian comes along. Maybe they're at lunch, they're coming along. And they'll do the search. And they will manually, with their own, you know, system... Find that memory, find that information for you. Now, the unconscious mind is the part that generally we class in hypnosis terms as being the part of you that can help to make real, real changes in your life when you speak or when your unconscious mind hears you. It listens and it makes changes. Which is why hypnosis is pretty much talking to your unconscious mind. Because your unconscious mind is always listening. Which is why it's really important to start noticing the things that you say to yourself on a regular basis because your unconscious mind is taking that stuff as being requests so if you're focusing on feeling crap or feeling tense or feeling stressed uh, in an interview that's coming up like next week for example if that's what you're focusing on, you're requesting that in your unconscious mind. You're requesting it from your unconscious mind. You're thinking about it, and your unconscious mind is working to give you exactly what it thinks you're requesting, which is to feel stressed and tense and anxious during that upcoming interview. I think that's quite a good example. Um, it's a very simple, very basic example of how the unconscious mind seems to work. Now you might think, well, why would I do that to myself? Why would my unconscious mind try to hurt me? It's not trying to hurt you. It's trying to give you what you want. And the way it works is what you think about is what you get more of. So what you think about is what your unconscious mind thinks you want. That's how it works. It has to be told what to do. Okay. It has to, you have to request what you want from it. Just in a way as if you want information from the past, you request it. But you don't request it necessarily directly. Most of the time we request it, but just try to think about oh what was what was the name of that what was the name of that person that I got married to? I forget her name now, you know. <laughs> so you're thinking it and you can't think of the name. Your unconscious mind takes that as a request. And to be fair, a lot of those kind of questions that we... You know when you're in a conversation with someone and... Oh, who was it who played that character? What was his name who was... Who played the character of the, the young bloke that is a young boy? And 
he was a Q. He was a Q, but he wasn't. He didn't know he was a Q. Now, if you have the information, if you knew it originally, you have to have known it originally. It's not going to give you information that you've never known. You know, you need to Google that. That's what Google's for. But that kind of stuff is unimportant to your unconscious mind. And it kind of knows it. it. It'll work on it or it won't, you know, it'll go slow or quick depending on what it feels like. You know, something like that's never really going to be a priority. You know, you go to your subconscious mind for that information. And if it's not there, then you leave it. And ideally, just go to Google. But, you you know, you might get in your mind, you might be thinking about it, and your unconscious mind picks it up as a request. But as far as to do lists, it's not a priority. But if you're thinking intensely about an interview that you're coming up, and you're imagining yourself stuttering or getting there late, sweating, um, you know, whatever, all these sort of negative kind of connotations and versions, and, you know, and you're imagining this stuff in your mind, your unconscious mind's picking that up and thinking, hey, we've got an urgent request here. Yeah, he wants to, he's got an interview. It's almost like, they're, like these staff are in this big library, this big place, it's not just a library, but it's uh, almost a wish fulfillment uh, centre. And they're there, like, what's the most important thing? Um, well, th- there's only one thing he's thinking about most of all. And that's this interview he's got coming up. He wants to feel terrible. He wants to feel stressed and anxious during this interview so we need to work to give that to him now this sounds absolutely ridiculous doesn't it trust me if you listen you know it does it sounds stupid why would you or part of you try to give you something that's harmful or that's gonna harm not harm you I mean that that, that is harmful but it's not you know, it's, it's a different type of harmful. But to give you something that's going to be uh, horrible. I'm trying to help you to have a horrible experience. It's doing it because you're doing... You're asking in the correct way for that. By putting energy, by visualising by thinking constantly about something. When you do that, that is the request. That's requesting more of that. And your unconscious mind gives you more of what you think about. Sometimes it can just be, you think more about it. Especially if it's something that's never going to happen. So, you know, you can you can think about... Um, if this is your way of thinking, you can think about earthquakes all day long. And what will happen is you'll think about it more and more and more. The more you think about your your house crumbling to the ground in an earthquake, if that's your cho- chosen subject, the more you'll think about it. So the more anxious and the more crappy you'll feel. It won't cause an earthquake, you know, unless you live somewhere where earthquakes happen. I know earthquakes technically can happen anywhere, but, you know, if you look at the news, it's, it's sort of the same type of places. You know, if you if you live, it's just not going to happen. Like, you're not going to have a tsunami hit you if you live in the middle of a desert. Just as an example, yeah. But you can imagine a tsunami hitting you, a tsunami coming and taking away your home and you know flooding everything. Mind you, a desert might welcome a tsunami. I mean, that's probably the best place to have lots of water, isn't it? But 
So you could be there. Imagine you'd be there in the middle of a desert. Let's say Nevada desert. Somewhere thousands of miles, maybe from the nearest sea. Having nightmares and sitting there full of anxiety and tension about a tsunami or a tidal wave hitting your house. Never going to happen. Impossible to happen. So your unconscious mind doesn't care about what's possible and what's not possible. It will still give you those anxiety feelings. If the, It'll give you more of what you think about. So if you're anxious about something that's never likely to happen, which, let's face it, is something we all do, doesn't it? And that plane, five, seven years of that plane going past when I'm making podcasts and it still hasn't crashed. See? Wish fulfillment doesn't make it happen. You know? I can't control that plane and make it crash into the <laughs> to the mountain. There's no mountains either. That plane's been annoying me for seven years. Seriously. Uh, I want him to crash. I don't want him to hurt. You know, I want him to bail out first. You know, I don't want anyone to be calmed. But I do want the plane to crash. So he can never fly it again. And annoy me. It's true. <laughs> I don't care. But I'm not bothered about it. Not really. I used to be. Every time I did a recording, suddenly he just... It's almost like he had a access to my computer. Whenever I press, you know, record, he'd appear. Like, quickly, get in, a, get in a plane. Fly over. He loves it. But the more, more I uh, used to think about that... Now, I know, you know, it's just the more annoyed I used to get. So what you focus on... The point of this is what you focus on is what you get more of. Now, you can go different ways with this. She's like, oh, this is absolute bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But at the same time, if you have a brain that works, you can actually see that this is true because you've experienced it. You might not want it to be true. But we know that the more we think about something, the more we think about it. And then we think about it even more and more and more and more and more and more. And it affects the outcome. Now, you know, as I said, it can't cause an earthquake. But it can increase your anxiety about an earthquake occurring. And as we all know, what, 90% plus of things that we worry about never happen. Which is most, isn't it? I mean, it's a pretty high, much higher percentage, probably 99%, but um, I don't want to go that high because things do still happen. It's not like nothing bad ever happens, obviously. But also, good things happen. Never seem to worry about the good stuff, though, do we? And you know what would happen if we did? More good stuff. More good stuff would happen. That's the ironic thing about it. So you don't even have to go positive with this. It just means that when the good stuff happens, you won't enjoy it. If you're planning to feel crappy, so if you you could imagine yourself. Having the, the interview. And then something crappy happening afterwards. So you still feel tense. But you're imagining that the interview goes really good. That you feel really relaxed in the interview. And then... Um, something afterwards happens. Now in that situation, you might actually have a really good interview because that's what you've been rehearsing in your mind 
you've been rehearsing feeling confident and relaxed and calm and it's almost like you're rehearsing that your unconscious mind sees that rehearsal as a request because you're imagining it happening and then it gives it to you it gives you the resources that you require that you need in that moment allows you to experience those things that you imagined experiencing in that interview that you were rehearsing gives you what you need allows you to feel relaxed and calm during the interview and then allows you to feel how you rehearsed feeling after the interview If you think about this, if you really think about it, you could change your life. This information could change your life. And I know that no one, I don't think anyone wants anyone to tell them something that's going to change their life. Because it's annoying. Because it's, it's almost like, oh, you're a know-it-all. What do you, you know? You've been changing my life. I've been doing all right, thanks. I'm alive, and I... What do you know about me? <laughs> well, this could change your life. But then... Buying yourself... A bicycle could change your life. So let's face it, lots of things can change your life. Asking someone out that you like could change your life. Well, it will change your life if they go out with you. So there's lots of ways to change your life. But this is a, a way that you can transform your whole life if you chose to do so. If you chose to remember what I've told you. The thing is, it's very, well, it's not easy just to really kind of, um, I think it's easy information, it's simple, really, but then it's like, well, where's the proof? Where's the proof? Well, we have so many examples of the proof, of, you know, the proof of this. But it does need to be tested. It is something. Um, where. We need to find for ourselves. That it works. Instead of just taking my. My. Uh, my word for it. And none of this is my idea. This is not my idea. This is not. This is my explanation. Of my understanding of, I guess, hypnosis and the unconscious mind. Okay? But this is based on various different aspects, not just hypnosis, which I won't go into, but it's this is um, based on other knowledge sort of mixed together in order to, to explain it in the way that I have. So I hope it's been useful. So... Remembering what we think about, we get more of. What you think about, your unconscious mind tries to give you more of. And the question, why, why would it give you negative stuff? It doesn't understand the difference between negative and positive, the unconscious mind. That's a conscious thing. The unconscious mind gives you what you ask for. It's almost like the the unconscious mind is color blind, and you ask for, uh, you know, you you just it just doesn't know, you know, you just it's, it doesn't care. It gives you what you want. It's not color blind in that sense. That's not a good example. Color blind. 
it, it doesn't have it doesn't care it doesn't really know about that stuff all your unconscious mind cares about is giving you what you want only cares about you that part of your mind the same part of your mind really you know looks after your body heals your body your heart your brain you know everything to do with uh, all those automatic things so it's there self preservation it's there to keep you alive and to keep you you know okay now what you want to do with that is up to you if you want to be happy that's a conscious choice that you need to make that's not for you you can tell your unconscious mind that's what you want which will then give you what you want but you have to consciously choose this stuff just like if you want to be physically fit you have to consciously choose to be physically fit and then you can start imagining yourself going to the gym losing weight or be you know building some muscle feeling fitter being able to breathe easier being able to get a much a bigger lungs for all of, you know worth of oxygen being able to walk upstairs without sweating like me so this can be tested in small ways and the more you test it, the more you realize that this is true. And that we affect how we feel. Now, you know, some say, yeah, but this man, he had a go at me. And yeah, of course, other people affect how we feel as well. I mean, best will in the world, you can't deny that if someone just has a go at you it's going to have an effect on you unless you're like a monk you know a buddhist monk or something that's uh manages to not react at all you know uh but there's not many people like that about but there's a difference between reacting and responding so you know maybe get to the point where you can respond and maybe choose to react later if you want to, but just not in that moment because it's not helpful. And there's lots of techniques and things that you can do to take away that feeling, to change how you feel about what happened. So just try and remember the, the sentence, we get more of what we think about. We get more of what we think about. So if you're imagining a situation, really imagining it, and then imagining it again, then later on, imagining it and thinking about it and imagining it, something that you're concerned about or something do you expect to happen in the future or the near future maybe tomorrow now what you imagine the emotions that you feel when you imagine it has a huge effect on the outcome You think of the interview situation. Imagine you're going for an interview. So you've got this job interview coming up. Your friend owns the company. Or your friend's a manager. Or he one of the, you know, he's one of the managers in the company. He got you this job interview. What you don't know is all you have to do is turn up. The interview, you've got the job because he's got sway. You know, he's he's 
he's told his friend that he will, you know, you got I've um, got my friend coming in for an interview, give him the job. In fact, if a manager tells you that, a friend of mine's coming in for a job interview, nothing else needs to be said other than it's implied, give him or her the job. Unless they say, please don't give them the job, I don't want to work with them. You know, this, but that, it's unlikely that's going to happen. So in that scenario, you've basically got the job before you even turn up. All you've got to do is turn up, that's it. Now you might not know that you already have the job. One of your biggest things in life may be how much you dislike job interviews. So you spend all weekend, jobs Monday, job interviews Monday. You spend Saturday and Sunday tense and stressed and worried and imagining all these horrible situations and negativity piled upon negativity when in truthfulness you don't need any of that. You don't even need to think about it because you've already got the job. Now, if you don't turn up, you don't get the job, even though it was yours to start with. You know, you, that's it. You generally don't get more than one opportunity like that. You don't turn up for a job interview without a really amazingly good reason. You know, you're not going to get another chance, you know. If you do turn up, and you're such a wreck that all you do is babble on about nothing and you're sweating and you're unable to even have a conversation because of the situation you know and maybe you end up vomiting in a bin or something extreme like that then you're not going to get the job either you know it's the chances that that job that was in your pocket will have gently crawled out of your pocket and run away because, you know, you don't fit. In their mind, they wouldn't want to give you a job if you're like that. So that's an example of something that's already yours. And because of how, not you, I'm not saying specifically yours, but that's something that someone has a job before they even go, and because of their thinking, their negative thinking, they lose a job that was theirs to lose. That's the same, that's the same, isn't it? It's yours to lose. So basically, all you've got to turn turn up and do what you normally do. Just be, have a bit of positivity. Uh, if you go in, just like if you go into a job interview and you spend the whole time moaning about um, the government <laughs> for like an hour, then you're not going to get the job unless you work for a newspaper, maybe. What we think about, we get more of. Or you get more of what you think about. So what we think about is really important. It's not really, it's, it's basically the most important thing possibly in our lives it's up there you know we in, in with importance it's one of the most important things to know and most people don't seem to know see if you were playing a video game right and that computer or that system was connected to your brain and wherever you went whenever you opened a new door there'd be uh, like a new pathway and there would be animals right and you would be walking through this field through this and there'd be, you know like a field and there'd be a pathway and there'd be animals around you but only one type of animal for each doorway. And then you get to another doorway and you open the doorway and you walk through there. And the more doorways you can get through, the more fields you can walk through safely, the higher level you get, you know, score. You with me? So the more doors you can get through, open the door, whatever animal you're thinking of is there will be lots of those animals in that field. 
And all you've got to do is walk through the field safely to the next door at the end of the field and you go in there and again you think of an animal. So you're about to walk into that first door. What animal are you going to choose? What animal are you going to think of? Now, if you think of this as an uh, analogy for your life, where what you think about instantly comes to be, instantly affects your immediate life, you know, as this game. So what you think about, the animal you think of will be, there'll be multiple of those animals in that field that you need to cross safely to get to the next door. Okay. What animal are you going to think of? And the first animal comes into your mind is the animal that goes in that that you're going to be in there with. Now, I'm guessing you're not going to think about lions. Because that would be, well, ridiculous, wouldn't it? If you know you have to cross that field safely, and you choose, you get to choose what animal you think of, then, I mean, you know, squirrels would be a good animal, wouldn't it? In fact, it'd be fun to walk walk across a field with thousands of squirrels running around with their big bushy tails, especially if you had, like, some bread or, you know, some food to give them. And you just safely walk across the field to the next door. Now, if there's lions there, would you even get to the next door? Probably not. And the next door, you know, it's a big field. It's not like it's just a few steps. It's a, it's a, it's a distance to get to the next door. So you're not going to get to the next door safely if the place is full of hungry lions. I forgot to add that hungry. <laughs> Does this make sense to you where I'm going with this? Because that's what's happening in our lives, but it's not as instant as that. In the sense of what we expect to happen next. Because we'd never get asked to choose unconsciously that stuff. You know, this this is a game. It's not, not realistic to our situation but if you think about the animals so this is just an idea this is a thought I thought I'd just um, mention this because you know when it's something that we've got going on in the future and we start to plan in our head we can plan for positive outcome or for a negative outcome to feel relaxed or to feel shitty and crappy and stressed. So we can rehearse this in our minds and that's just another version of that video game. So instead of being instant, you know, you know you need to go through a door and there's going to be animals there and you have to choose an animal. This is a similar kind of situation where you know there's a wedding coming up and you're going to be around lots of people and maybe you get stressed normally in those situations planning to feel relaxed uh, instead of stressed and then you give time to that rehearsing feeling relaxed and calm so I'll leave you with this idea this is just, it's just an idea um, that might be useful just remember what you think about you get more of and we definitely can make a big difference to our lives big difference to our futures to how we feel so take care thanks for listening 
Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Bye.